Even your father. I trust her a trust.
venture to go and take it. on you today that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever the word of the Lord thanks be to God the responsorial psalm can be found on page 170 letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. And when they all saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of you have well-intentioned, good Protestant friends that have sometimes challenged you on certain things and said, show me purgatory in the Bible? Does anybody ever have that? Come on, I know many of you have, right? Yeah. Where's purgatory? Show me that in the Bible. Well, the next time say to them, well, do you believe in the Trinity? Of course I believe in the Trinity. Say to them, show me where that's found in the Bible. You won't find it, right? You won't find the word Trinity anywhere in the Bible. So how do we get these concepts? Well, from the scriptures. Remember Jesus in John's Gospel said that, I will send the Holy Spirit, the advocate, meaning the helper in Greek, to teach you all things and to remind you of what I have taught you. And so those early church, we call them the church fathers, the patristics. These were great bishops of the church and theologians. When they read the scriptures, they said, we get it now. There's one God, but there's three persons in one God. It goes back to Isaiah. You know, when you read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and we all are familiar with this at Advent, for a child is born to us and a child is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, meaning all authority. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So even Isaiah begins to give the people this concept that more is coming from God. Luke chapter 135 appears to Mary, right? The angel says, and the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So already Gabriel saying, the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit upon you, and you will bear not just any ordinary child, but the Son of God. Then, for the first time in human history, even though the Trinity always existed, it reveals itself at the baptism of Jesus. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And then a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So for the first time in human history, the Trinity manifests itself. Father, the voice, the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove, Jesus himself in the waters of baptism. Then it gets a little more controversial because remember, Jewish people, they believed they were monotheistic. They were different from all the other religions because they believed in one God, only one God. And Jesus has the audacity to say in John chapter 10, verse 30, and the Father and I are one. Mm, gets their head scratching a little bit, right? John chapter 14, verse 9 to 11. 
Jesus is going on with this long theological discourse, and Philip says, Jesus, just show us the Father, and we'll be happy. And what does Jesus say? He says, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such amount of time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? And then we heard that wonderful proclamation from Matthew's Gospel. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name, not the names, but the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That is why we as Catholics always baptize in that Trinitarian formula. Okay, Most Protestant churches do too. Some just baptize in the name of Jesus, but we do what Jesus said to do, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's admit, trying to figure out the Trinity is almost impossible, okay? And I'm not going to try to do that tonight, but I think I can give you a little example about how to understand the Trinity. All right, so you see me as Father Greg, and I've been here several times did the parish mission, on the vocation director, you relate to me as a friar, a priest, okay? You call me Father Greg. That's my relationship with you. I celebrate the sacraments for you. I hear confessions and so forth. All the things that a priest does. Now, my 90-year-old mother still alive, God bless her. She sees me first and relates to me as her son, Greg. All right. Yes, she knows I'm a priest, and sometimes I relate to her as a priest, like when I celebrate Mass with her and my sisters and my nieces, where my mom lives with my sister right now. But she, she relates to me, first of all, as her son. And yes, she also knows that I'm a priest. And then my buddies that I grew up with in Philly, I can't believe I'm going to my 50th high school reunion next Friday. So I'm going to see some of these guys that I played ball with, partied with, had a great time with. They relate to me first as Greg, even though they know that I'm Frank and Joan's son, and they also know, of course, that I'm a priest because I'm going to celebrate Mass for my class. But do you see how I'm one substance, but yet I have three persons? Okay, the word person comes from the Latin persona, which means mask or face. So think of God as that. God is one substance. Did you ever remember in the creed, everybody kind of scratches their head when they say, consubstantial with the Father? And everybody goes like, it goes in one ear and out the other, right? What does that mean? It means that Jesus and the Father are of one substance, okay? that they're not different in composition, but they're the same. But even though Jesus, even though he was in the form of God, as it says in that beautiful um, poem in Colossians, took on human flesh so that he could enter into our world in the fullness of time, as Paul would say. But they're of one substance. So the Catechism says there is one God but three persons in one God. And think about it, we kind of relate to them in a different way, right? So we have God the Father. God creates all things. God is that energy, that love that makes everything out of nothing. God sustains us all. Then we have Jesus. God comes to us in the person of Jesus. He becomes incarnate, meaning he takes on human flesh. Because... Jesus is the face of God. He's that smile of God. He's kind of that stern face of God, too, at times. You know, saying, mm, you need to change your ways. He's that forgiveness of God. He's that touch of God. He's the only one who brings our prayers directly to the Father. Do you ever notice at Mass, every prayer that we say, we pray through Christ our Lord, right? That's because only Jesus is the mediator between God and us. So you have God who relates to us as Father, Creator, 
God who relates to us as son, redeemer, who takes on our flesh and also dies for us in that flesh. And then you have God the Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. Think of this. This is the way I like to think about the Holy Spirit. Imagine you have a son or daughter. They go off to college or they may be drafted. And if you could take your love and your wisdom and your strength and your consolation and you could send that to them, that they would feel that. Think of the Holy Spirit as that. The Spirit is that consolation of God. It is that wisdom of God. It is that fortitude of God. And it's given to every one of us at the moment of our baptism. And then all those wonderful gifts are confirmed on us during our confirmation. So again, the Trinity is relational. The Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. And the Holy Spirit loves the Father. And the Son loves the Holy Spirit. It's just this big ball of love and energy. How can you relate to that? Well, think about this. All of us, if you want to have a healthy life, you have to love yourself, okay? Not in a narcissistic way, not in a self-indulgent way, but when you live a healthy life, you, you love yourself, okay? So if I'm a good son to my mother and I'm a good brother to my siblings back home and I'm a good friar to my brothers whom I live with and minister with, and if I'm a good friend and if I'm a good priest, well, then that's the way that I love myself because I feel good. I'm happy. I'm doing what God has created me to do. That's what it means to love yourself. And so the Trinity loves, the Father loves the Son because what do they do? They're always good. They are pure good. So let me just review again. We get the idea of the Trinity, even though you won't find the word Trinity in the Scriptures it's taken from all the passages that we read about three persons. But we believe that there is one God, but three persons that come out of that God. They are all of the same essence, consubstantial with each other. The Father is the Creator. The Son is the Redeemer. The Holy Spirit is the Sanctifier. They love us. And they call us to love one another because that's what the Trinity does. It continually loves the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, in conclusion, you know, a mystery is something that we don't often understand. That's why they call it a mystery, okay? But sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and trust that the Holy Spirit is still guiding the church and revealing these important truths of the church and to accept them, really, with blind faith. That's what faith is. Sometimes you just have to accept with blind faith and trust in Jesus' words at the end when he says, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you all that I have taught you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now let us stand as we profess our faith and that great mystery of the Trinity. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and offer our prayers for all those in need. For the Church, that we may faithfully carry on our mission of making disciples of all nations, conveying by word and example all that Jesus has taught us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all God's children, that we may live together in peace, free from lethal violence, so that we may have the long life on the land that Moses proclaimed thousands of years ago. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be willing to accept the challenge of changing our behavior so that climate change may be mitigated and we and generations to come may prosper. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, especially Shauna Baranchik and Toby Briggs and Danielle Mahalski and Nathan Ellerbrock, who were married this weekend, that their mutual love may reflect the divine love among Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lost their lives in war, for those they left behind, and for the world, which has lost the impact they could have made during the rest of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, especially Levi Tyler Bebo, who will be baptized this weekend, that we may bear witness to our loving and forgiving God, who is with us always until the end of the age. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters may be raised into the glory of the Holy Trinity, especially Harold Matushek and Joseph Ignarski. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, Heavenly Father, as your children born of the Spirit, we present these prayers and needs to you, knowing that you will answer them in your way and in your time. We pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of gifts is number 198. Holy God, we praise thy name. One, nine, eight. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. Oh, man. 
gifts of bread and wine that you have presented are now prepared upon this sacred altar. Pray with me now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this offering of our service. And by it, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want you to listen carefully to the words of the Eucharistic prayer. Remember what I said. All prayers are addressed to God the Father, through the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to do the preface now as we prepare to enter into the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord and in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and again, Father, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, all the clergy, and your holy people everywhere. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Francis and Claire, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here this evening, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of our Lord Jesus be with each of you. And as we gather in the sign of the Trinity, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, truly present in this sacrament. Humanity, divinity, body and blood. This is the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, and how blessed are we who were called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The song during communion is number four, three, two, How Great Thou Art. Four, three, two.
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thanksgiving, let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder that after Mass um, and in the parish office during the week, they sell script, and of course that helps our school. Uh, but the parish office will, of course, be closed on Monday. If your child made First Communion this year, please take home their banner this weekend. And finally, next Sunday is the Feast of Corpus Christi. After the 9 a.m. Mass, St. Casimir will have a procession with the Blessed Sacrament to the Krakow Community Park for a short prayer service and return to church for benediction. Everyone is welcome to walk the one and a half miles. If you are unable to walk that distance, we encourage you to join us at the park and at the church. And of course, this coming summer is the uh, Eucharistic Congress. The friars are going to be there. There's thousands of people coming, but we're really encouraging people to do something on a local level also. And so this procession that they'll have next week. It's just a wonderful way just to remind people that the center of our church is the Eucharist, the true body and blood of Christ among us. I hope you also have a great Memorial Day weekend. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is now ended, but as disciples of our Lord Jesus, let us go forth and glorify him with our lives. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth song is number 745, America the Beautiful, 745. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties, of all the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. Across the 